Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to eliminate one of the worst algaes in the aquarium hobby, blackbeard algae. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so the very first thing to understand with blackbeard algae is why it has come about. Now most algae has come about through an imbalance in light and nutrients. However, with blackbeard algae, it's actually thought to come about more freely due to a lack of CO2 in the system. In order to identify blackbeard algae, uh, the name certainly goes a long way, but I'll show you it now. Uh, if you can see just here on the edge of this driftwood, that is an example of blackbeard algae. It does look like sort of a black beardy sort of hair algae texture. It's very, very hard to get off surfaces and uh, it's yeah, just a very rugged algae to get. So um, that's the first thing is, is uh, key to just identify it properly. So if you have something like this, uh, then that's most likely blackbeard algae. Can also take on a few different colors. Can be sort of a dark red color, a dark green color, or commonly this sort of black appearance here. So now that we've identified blackbeard algae in our aquarium, what can we do about it? How can we uh, go about getting rid of it? I recommend if you do have algae on a particular surface like this, you can steal your kid's toothbrush or you can you know, just pick up a spare toothbrush. They are quite handy to have in fish room environments anyway. So you just get a small toothbrush, pull the ornament out of the aquarium and stick it in a bucket. It can also help to put some chemicals in the bucket that we'll talk about shortly and just get a toothbrush and try to manually remove as much of it as you can before um, attempting any other solution. It will really go a long way in speeding up the process. I wouldn't however do this inside the aquarium because all it's going to do is uh, stir up all the little fibres of the hair algae, spread it all around the aquarium and then you'll just find little nodes of it in uh, more places than the centralised area, making it difficult to clear up in the long term. So there's a few different ways, but my favourite way is maybe the lazy man's option. I prefer to use a Siamese algae eater. Now there aren't too many fish that actually eat blackbeard algae, but the Siamese algae eater is one of them. You can see on screen here there are four right there in this aquarium, and that's because this aquarium used to be overrun with blackbeard algae. The entire back wall used to be covered in the stuff, and it was a real nightmare. You can sort of just see the last remnants of it on the uh, heater cable there, but um, these guys have really done a number and cleaned it up. A couple of things to note about Siamese algae eaters. There are a few other fish that will look similar to Siamese algae eaters, but uh, won't do the same job. So you want to make sure that you get true Siamese algae eaters. And the other thing to be wary of is that a fully grown Siamese algae eater gets quite large. There's one right there, so even though they start off as cute little critters, they soon become large uh, fish. Although true Siamese algae eaters, you don't have to worry about anything too much. They're just gonna be a big uh, clumsy sort of fish. They're not gonna be aggressive or anything like that, like some of the other options might be. If your aquarium isn't suitable for a Siamese algae eater to be added, or you have some other situation preventing you from that method, you could go ahead and pick up some Flourish Excel. This here, uh, although it's supposed to be a liquid CO2 supplement, it actually works really well to get rid of blackbeard algae. So to do this, what you would want to do is get yourself a little pipette and turn off all the flow in the aquarium so the water is nice and still. Then you get your pipette, put it into the Flourish XL, go down to the area where there is actually blackbeard algae and then just dose the Flourish XL directly on top of the blackbeard algae. And once you do this a few times, you'll start to notice the color of the algae change to a redder sort of color. And that's a good indication that it's actually dying off. So I wouldn't go too overboard on this. Keep in mind the um, dosing instructions for the entire aquarium. But you will notice, especially if you've only got a few little sections of it, um, the amount that you could dose your aquarium, you'll easily be able to do a heavy spot dose of that um, area. After say 10-15 minutes you can turn your filters back on and that will give you a healthy balance between getting the uh, contact from the sea chem flourish onto the algae versus killing the bacteria inside your filter. 
Once again, if your particular area doesn't stock Flourish XL, there are some alternatives as well, such as uh, Easy Carbo, No More Blackbeard, or you could also use Hydrogen Peroxide, but be sure to uh, research the correct dosing instructions of Hydrogen Peroxide so that you don't do any damage to the livestock in your aquarium. Failing that, due to the knowledge that Blackbeard algae flourishes in low CO2 environments, you could always hook up a pressurised CO2 system. So I'll give you an example of one of my CO2 systems right here. This is a simple CO2 system. So, it's, so we just have a small CO2 bottle here, a regulator that goes up to a diffuser and that's how I inject CO2 into this aquarium. So they don't have to be too crazy. You can get small versions as well. Although if you're gonna keep the CO2 on the aquarium in the long term, it's more cost effective to get a larger bottle. But if you just want it for the purpose of eliminating the uh, blackbeard algae, then that might be an option. However, keep in mind that it might be temporary and as soon as the CO2 runs out, you might have the blackbeard algae come back. Of course, with these three options, it would be a lot more effective and a lot quicker to enact all three of them. Um, they, they will all work in conjunction with each other. You could always, of course, add a Siamese algae eater, add a pressurized CO2 system and spot dose with CCAM Flourish or an alternative. And if you do all three of those things, you should find that the Blackbeard algae is defeated in no time. So I hope this video helps you. I hope it clears up some of the confusion around Blackbeard algae. And I hope that soon you can get some sweet, sweet relief from uh, having this ugly, disgusting, difficult to remove algae in your beautiful aquarium. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.